Now we're approaching the last few days of February. And spring is the kind of sprung. After three or four we've done dry days there. The birds are chirping in the sky. Maybe I might have a little bit of improvement in the weather. I know the forecast for next week is not great, but it's another few days of this mid and dry weather coming. So I think the time the cows go grass into their diet to help them start the lactation as good as possible. So the driest field in the farm is not a great cover on it, but we get it grazed and, uh, and, uh, and up yesterday and I put a fence off a section for them and um, let them out and see what they think of it. The dry cows are not too happy in the shed, they're not getting going, but the day will come. Now, so they're happy to go out, they're skipping down the pass, they're quite happy. Look, it's not great grass they're going to, it's probably a cover of 1800, but I mean, three or four hours of that, and back in again. Did the world look good? Help them make flow with early lactation, help them get get right for the year ahead. It can also reduce a bit of pressure on the soil tank and on the cinder pit, so. We'll try and get them out every day from now on if we can, three or four hours. Unless it's a fierce wet cut. I mean, I can eat the rocky paddocks first. And then hopefully get back down to the closer paddocks. That's a bit heavier, that it could be a bit drier weather, so. I think the cars are going up and close to me now, I'll see you up there. No. That's them. It's not a great cover, it's a bit green looking, but it's not that bad either. Sydney hundred from anything under the cover. Well known dry fields I have to start off on, so I put it in two up there behind that last card, there's a fence there in the middle of it. That other half will do tomorrow. Weather permitting. That's it girls, season for three or four hours. And there you're first day out.
the slate arrival of spring also one or two calls about post driving service that I do for people. So if any is one post driven the Grano Cavern area, a reasonable distance of here, just uh, email me, thrownders at gmail.com. But um, yeah, I got a call from a customer not far from here. Uh, he's very post for the acre scheme for drink planting. So I'm heading off to do that now, myself and Tony and Michael. I'll give Michael the camera and he might get a few shots of the action. I'm sure he will. I won't be able to film because I'll be busy working the post driver. But um Michael get a few shots and so we'll, we'll talk to you when I get back or later on. It's the next morning guys. Uh, sorry I got no footage of the post driving. It's um it was just on a side of a hill and it was slippy and it's got a concentration to get the post down. I don't have to worry about the camera, but uh, like I said, any one post I've been done at Keen rates within a reasonable distance of the Cavan Towns there, that area, uh, drone days at gmail.com will get me. Now I'm back in the field now with the cows on the next morning. I'm walking across just what they ate yesterday, I'll give you a look at us. See, didn't do that bad. You know, good enough clean out, well, good enough clean out, it's not going to be great, but for the time of the year and for the conditions, it's not bad clean out. The fence was about here, awesome, plus the yesterday division fence, so then I went the second section of it. I actually measured it yesterday, there's about 800 of a cover on the 750 or something, 760, close to 800 around there. Uh, so happy out, they didn't roar when I went up close to them in, so that's a good sign. There's a few hoof marks there, but nothing that a kid had a one sort. A few weeks' time, whenever the dragon starts properly. So now, guys, um, it's actually, I think, two weeks or close to two weeks later from the last footage. Uh, just I suppose put the camera down for a few weeks there, well a few days anyway. Locking on uh, the confirmation in as well. Michael got confirmation. Uh, there wasn't much to film really because it's all just uh, bedding, calves, feeding calves, whatever. It's all calf work and cows calving and cows in there to grass, weather permitting on off grazing it's called. Um, stuff like that, put in silage to heifers and cows and throwing lumps of amphors of straw to calves and that kind of carry on. There wasn't a whole pile that they put on the video, but um, it's two weeks later, I'll just update what's going on now. So we have 43 cows calved, so there's only 17 to go. So um, all's good, there's 41 cows going through the parlour, there's um, one cow I remember the one that calved earlier on that I sold. And another cow, she was actually, I'll have her on a second. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I was saying there's 41 cows going through the paddle at the minute. There was one cow I sold earlier on, and the other cow was a heifer. Uh, look at that, didn't we get one heifer like this? She's kind of a misfit for milking. She calved, no problem, um, into the parlour, kind of settled down. Since the video that I don't have the heifers, the last video, the fresher one since that. Um, quarters went hard. She had mistakes in a couple of them. She was tender, she was sore, she got real sore and have no milk. Just in milk on she's a kind of a bloody kind of a whitey kind of a drop, which is no good to her or to me, so I put her up in the shed in in in, a, in in on a bale of real dry haylage kind of stuff that will dry her off. Probably get go back in tissue and, and I'll probably sell her, buy a cow in our place. Mm. A few weeks down the line, um, got the milk machine serviced there a few days ago. Had a big issue with with, with the vacuum. It was one of far too strong. It was one sixty four, so it was around forty four, which might be a reason why my cell count was a bit fluctuated the last couple of months. So hopefully that'll rectify that. Um 
two calves here with the scour. It's the first scour I had this year. No, she's not, not a lie. It's a t- 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 I lost the calf for scour last week. Uh, these two have it at the minute. This black one is over. This Frisian is getting over slowly. Keeping our fluids in her and uh, electrolytes, you know. And um, that's the story with the them. Um, yeah. I just might clean up one of them hens out. Now, I might feed them first, now them roar, I'm doing it. Um, what I do now is I clean one pen every day. So there's between the, the scour pen that we, in a minute ago and the four pens that's there, it's five pens. So each pen is changed every five days. It's better than what I used to do twice a week to clean them all out and pass the day at it. So it's, it's, it's easier and they're kept fresh every five days. So some days I do two pens if they're a bit dirty, whatever, but generally I do one a day. It's more, it's more, it's more appealing to do it that way than do them all. But um, yeah, that's still in the calves. So I'm happy enough with things in terms of calving and calves. And it's still only the middle of March. Palisade didn't come yet. So I'm well on for the time of year. If the grass would ever just get right and get them out full time. As in terms of weather improving and getting dry. A lot to do with that end yet, but it will come, it will come. Now this is Lucy. Lucy is four years old. Lucy was the very first heifer born in the calf shed a minute ago. In January 2020. The very first calf born in there. And Lucy was very much liked by the wee, wee man of the house, Connor, at the time. And he always was fond of Lucy and he, t- he said that Lucy was his, his, his calf. Lucy was AI'd in 2020. One, 22 and 23, and 21, 22 she didn't hold. And my plan was to get rid of her at last, the back end of 2020, what would it be, 2022, because she wasn't going to hold. And Connor cried and said, no, daddy, try her again. It's my cow. So, the were synchronized to have her last May. She was one of them, and she, she held. She's, she's about to calve. I know you're going to say a four-year-old heifer's done a good job in the parlour with cell count and mastitis and different problems, but look at the child wanted the heifer in calf, and he got her in calf, so he's hoping that it's a heifer so that he can call her Shauna. <laughs> I don't know why. The twins up the road will be Shauna and Lucy, maybe that's why. But, um, and they're twin people, not twin girls, not, not twin calves. Um, Shauna and Lucy is. So probably only have one calf anyway, but um, well, hopefully only have one calf. But Lucy's a good quiet pair of thing, and she's four year old, and um, she's going down to the calving pen tonight under the camera. And I'm finishing my job because she's uh, just not many hours left, I don't think. Now, just finished eating and milking, and the last row of cows on this side, I see the fourth cow was unsettled. So I pressed the button to feed her and realized that the ram was sticking, so there's probably something stuck in the in the bin here. That, usually this time of year it's all mouldy dust that's kind of in the bin during the dry period that comes down and then she just locks it up. Yeah, it's all locked up, you peel back up. You have to look to see. They are ram. Press the button. This ram here opens. It's the stone. So this mechanism here that opens up. This the stone. But it's coming right here. But it's jammed here down to the bottom. So we'll have to try and get to the root of the problem. Put them through. I don't know if to fall into the trough. I don't know if I could the morning with this side of the whole thing.
Let's go. Put them sausages out the bottom. She's clear. A lot of old mouldy meat. Because meat got in November before the cows were dry and if we did the meat all different and we finished off then in February when the cows came back into the parlour and by the bottom of the bin, there's the lump there. The bottom of the bin probably was the culprit. And anyway, there's one cow of good feed in the morning and then a good breakfast service. Now, this is Lucy, you know, Calvin Penn. I think she's born in this very pen, the first cat ever born in this shed in late January 2020, over four years ago. And she gets back now to have her own cat in it. And uh, I never had a four year old heifer before, Calvin, first time. I never probably have another one again. Usually she has been down two years of age, but she's in the hole for two years. And uh, as I say, Connor wanted to keep her because he was. She was his pet from she was a calf in this very shed, this very pen. And she's a good quiet hell thing because of that. And I suppose the child knew that if she didn't go on calf, she'd be going someplace else and not just say. She'd be cold and foot like that. And uh, look at it. We took a chance of her and she's in calf. We'll see if she, look at it. Experiment reasons me too to see what a four year old is like. I heard stories about them being. Um, Mistatus and high cell count and poor butter fat and stuff. But look at I won't know till I've been here. We can have see if she goes on. First step is going to calve first and show that everyone's okay after that. I mean, she has sunk the bones a bit. Most on this side. She won't probably calve tonight, I know, but at least there, because my dildo's full. At least when she's there, I can watch on the camera. And uh, that's it. I can. I put this video up whenever she calves, I suppose. I'll finish the video up with, with, with her calf and then her calf on the ground. And uh, we'll take it from there. Now, guys, it's the next day, and uh, she came on a lot overnight. Um, mind that gate, Michael, she's not that. Michael's here with us. It's Saturday, no school. Her bag is filled out fully and she's leaking milk and the tail is up to cock up and she's dealing with the cow to take it to the calf as well. It's all going down on this morning. She's not far behind her, two heifers. So we'll see how they go. I say before you even handle the one or two calves, that new one, if not two calves here on the, on the ground. So Lucy is coming to her, her D-Day eventually. Now guys, Lucy did calve last night. But 1 o'clock, 1 a.m. this morning. Um, I didn't, didn't get the camera out, and I meant to get the camera out for the, for the, for the bird. It was, it was uh, a few problems, but nothing major. I was away at a table quiz and I was watching on, on the phone on the camera, but um, I just know she was getting it hard to make any progress. She was unsettled looking and sick looking, so I came back off the table quiz and I um, handled her on a fine tube feet and a big head. So, uh, brother-in-law mine was here giving me hands, just have to be here. So we took the, we took the calf, it was a brave pull and it was a tight pull, the head was the biggest part of it. So, um, look at, that was it. Um, I hadn't time to get the camera out or even think about recording it, just one of them situations that you have to act quick as you can, plus it was the middle of the night, well it wasn't the one o'clock in the morning. And the camera went into my head. But uh, I'll show you the calf. I actually washed the shed out yesterday. And uh, disinfected it because there was a few cases of scour. We've got two or so small, two or three calves. One second. So, um, it's got five, four, nine calves. I'm in the back in a second. There was a few, few cases of scouring the last couple of weeks and uh, I kept the scouring cast in this pen just away from the rest of the gopretta so I had disinfected it off so I kill any infection there was in the pen. But here's Lucy's calf. Unfortunately, Connor, you can't call him Shauna because it's actually, I said it there, 
Das ist ja hier. Maybe Sean or something, but Sean wouldn't be. Not for today's world, you wouldn't know. The show, the thing, people be called stranger things than, than Sean or Sean nowadays. But anyway, that's um, that's Lucy's first calf. A lovely big jump of an Angus bull calf. So I think on that note we'll win. Today's video. It was a long video, not long as in watching it length, but it was, we don't want a long time recording of it because I suppose I didn't do much recording in the last few weeks because there's not much to record. The last three or four weeks have just been the same thing over and over again. Rain, 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 rain. And more rain. And what, what, what they're going to do is, they want to soon take up over Found when this country's finished, my friend. But the last few weeks I was saying was was rain, and uh, it's just a daily dose of calves. Calves being born, calves being fed, calves being bedded, calves being disputed, that and further, but in bales, but inside it, there's no nothing done really in the fields as such. The calves were out some days, three hours a day, and dry days and wet days they were in. So there wasn't really much, much thing to do in terms of a camera to get new stuff and get something to get good for a video. That's why I didn't really do much filming in the last few weeks. But now, I don't know, there's a, spring in the, there's a nice springy breeze to it today. You never, never know, things will be starting to improve slowly, hopefully. But I have to go out now, next few days, and sort of fencing in fields for paddocks, for cows and stuff. So I might film a bit of that for you and make a video of that for the next for the next video. Dan, the wind of the calf and there's 12 more to calf so well through it as well thank god so yeah so we'll leave it for today's video um i need one want to buy the merchandise we have the hoodies and the beanie hats and the mugs still available email me drone days at gmail.com and um that's it for now i suppose we'll talk to you again hopefully the next video will be out doing something in the field or something maybe out of this yard for a while. Talk soon again.